a tradition unlike any other. It was absolute mayhem this past weekend at Augusta National Golf Club in this year's Masters. Welcome into this week's edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Rob Cardini, joined alongside Amanda Vogt and Ashley Mascaro. The 87 Masters brought us bad weather, players withdrawing, and controversy. But nothing more important than John Rahm winning the green jacket, giving him his second career major tournament win. Rahm became the first European player to ever win the U.S. Open and Masters, and the sixth Spaniard ever to win the Masters. So Amanda, I'll start with you. Thoughts on Rahm's victory? Yeah, it was a long week, and John Rahm came out victorious. And it was basically just a two-man race between John Rahm and Brooks Kepka, but Rahm was the one who put on the green jacket. He had to play about 30 holes yesterday because of all the weather in rounds two and three that kind of made them blend into each other on the weekend. And when you think about how he had to play against Brooks, uh, Rahm is just a player that capitalizes when other players make mistakes. And when Brooks Kepka started going down, that's when you saw Rahm start to climb. And Brooks Kepka kind of just couldn't hang on. I mean, he is on the live uh, tour now. They only play 54 holes. So I wouldn't say that 18, the extra 18 was a factor for Brooks. He's played Augusta. He's been around the track a long time. But Rahm is just a player that is able to stay patient. And once he does go on a run, he cannot be stopped. Yeah, I mean, Amanda, you said John Rahm. He just played fantastic this weekend, like phenomenal. He ended up on the very first hole on Thursday. He double bogeyed. Like, and then he came back and he was seven under at the end of the round one. Like, that's just fantastic. Like, only the best of the best could do that for sure. And he definitely has proven that he's one of them. And Rob, you said this is only his second major win. He won the 2021 US Open and now he has a green jacket from the 2023 Masters. He, he overall just impressed everyone. He's very calm whenever he plays. He wasn't panicking. He wasn't worried about being like so close up with Brooks Kepka. He just did his own thing. And he was one of the only players that did not seem to be impacted by his opponents and by the weather. A lot of them were impacted by one of them. He really didn't seem like he was phased by either. And Zach Ertz and J.J. Watt and him are all good friends. And, they, and there was even a text from Zach Ertz that said, the first hole looked like a walk in the park. Like, there, people just respect him just in general. Obviously, that was sarcastic. But people in the golf world and just the other sports world and just in general, people respect John Rahm. Like, he is just a well deserved winner in my opinion and he really worked his way to the top and congratulations goes out to him. Yeah definitely an impressive victory for the now world number one John Rahm. And I want to ask you guys who was someone that you thought maybe stood out to you other than Rahm and someone who also disappointed Ashley I'll start with you on this one. So clearly the top two people Brooks Kepka, John Rahm they impressed everybody especially Brooks Kepka, especially because he's been downhill the past several tournaments and years and stuff like that but another player that comes to mind Jordan Spieth. Easter Day should is speed day. There's no other words about it. He's won the past two years on Easter Day. This year, that two that two year historic run came to a close. But he just played really, really well. On th going into Saturday round three, he made the cut. He was five under par. He played pretty good the first two days. That day, he was affected by the weather. He was one of those people that just went downhill. He was plus four. So he ended up at um, one under par going into Sunday. Now, the chances for him to have a chance to win or be at the top pretty much slim to none, especially because there was a huge gap between him and the then leader, Brooks Kepka at 12 under. He turned it around. He went six under on the day and he tied for fourth place, finished at seven under. And him and Phil, he played with, he was paired with, excuse me, he was paired with Phil Mickelson on Sunday. And just like Mil McElroy and Morikawa a few years ago, they were just rallying off each other, just kept going up, 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 like in the scoring and the rank in um, the leaderboard. And they just both played really, really well. But Spieth, he, it was just different, I feel like. Especially, I think, I don't know if it was because it was Easter, like, and he was just more, like, motivated. I don't know, maybe that does play a factor or something, but if he just really wanted to win. And he's always been pretty successful since his 2015 Masters win. Um, but he just, he really came back after being so low. I mean, that, it, his was really, really impressive. And for me, disappointment, his childhood best friend, Justin Thomas. I was actually really sad when I saw Justin Thomas miss the cut. He was plus, he ended um, at plus four. And as you can see in this picture, he's just looking up. He was on 18. He knew he bogeyed. It was just disappointment is written all across his face. There was another photo of him and his caddy standing under an umbrella. Just his face was so sad. I mean, there's no like, I don't even know what else to say about it. It was just heartbreaking. He 
hit, he blew a ball into the trees at, on 17, bogeyed that, bogeyed 18, both on Friday. And on Thursday, he ended the day at two under. So he looked like he was going to make the cut, and then he just went south from there. And I don't even think it was the weather that just affected him. I think he had a rough day, and he was frustrated. This is his first ever Masters cut miss, and you could just tell it was frustrating for him. So hopefully he'll be able to bounce back in the next couple weeks. Yeah, well, basically the storyline of the Masters, I don't think it's about the players individually. It's more about endurance and how the course favors experience. But Sam Bennett, who was awarded with the low amateur of award of the tournament, is was just so impressive. He finished rounds one and two at eight under par, and he was in a group with Max Homa and Scotty Scheffler, who was last year's champion. And what he did, that's the best 36-hole uh, score by an amateur in Masters history. So that's just incredible. And... I mean, the storm, the conditions, very hard. The course is just mentally challenging, especially when you're making your debut at a course you don't know. Augusta National is unlike any other. That's why the event is marketed as a tradition unlike any other. There's nothing better than it. But then for him to finish in the red figures and the first time an amateur has made a cut since 2020 just proved what the Texas A&M star can do for the world. But the player who disappointed me was Rory McIlroy. This was his ninth attempt to complete the career Grand Slam and solidify his name among the greats. I mean, he's already way up there. He's won so many majors, not one since 2014 in a major tournament. But he looked like he's been on the upslope, making a putter change a couple uh, tournaments ago that kind of resembled the one that he used um, in his first couple of major wins. But it was not enough. The experience did not do him any good. And he just really struggled and couldn't get it done and finished at five over par when the cut was plus three. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of you guys. Somebody that really stood out to me was Sahith Tagala, who finished at five under. Uh, solo ninth for the tournament, just 25 years old, playing in his first ever Masters, was cool and collected the whole weekend, really didn't matter what conditions were thrown at him, he played really well, and you know, he's still searching for his poor, first PGA Tour win, and I think he's going to get it soon, and I think one, another guy that really, the guy that disappointed me was Max Homa. Uh, Max Homa is a name that I feel like every week people feel like he can win, and he ended up plus four for the tournament, which I think is just really devastating for Max Homa. Um, he never got anything going. I think the lowest he was at was minus two on Friday, and it's really disappointing. But now I want to look more at the controversy of this weekend. Obviously, the weather brought a lot of that. We saw Tiger had to withdraw because of the weather. We saw trees fall down because of the weather. And with also the weather, became uh, different coverage. And coverage, people couldn't really watch it as much as they'd like to. And coverage also received criticism because of the way live players were being shown in the first two rounds. They weren't in any featured groups. So, Ashley, some of your thoughts on the controversy? So personally, as a viewer, I, Masters, you said Masters is your favorite of the favorite week of the year. It is also mine. As a viewer, I was super happy to see the Live players and the PGA Tour players come back together again. Like it was really nice because I didn't get to see, like I don't get to see like Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson. A lot of them, I don't get to see them play anymore. And it was nice to be able to see them play. But I will say, I personally didn't think that the live and PGA had much of an effect in general, like on each other. I think it was just kind of like, oh, cool. Like, you know, they're all going to play. Um, the weather was more of an issue. My personal opinion is that the weather affected the game so much that the players obviously didn't get to perform as well. And some players, the weather doesn't phase them at all. Others, clearly it did. But I just keep wondering, why didn't they cancel it? I mean, clearly the Masters tournament like board and organization they wanted to, it to finish by Sunday there's no doubt about that they would do whatever they could they played until it was actually not safe to play there's no doubt that they just push it to the last minute my personal thinking is that's not fair to the players I mean you could just see in this picture those fans and players they look miserable like that's not fun that's not fair I mean I'm sure they were all like I would rather be home I mean those players that missed the cut they probably were so happy that they could just be home, not be playing in that miserable weather. But I personally was not a fan of how they just kept pushing it. I think they should have called it and been done with it and maybe played another day till Monday because they had to, like, play it, like, you know, 27 holes, some of them. So it was a lot. But, yeah, I just yeah. wasn't a fan. You make some really good points. But this event with bringing the live players and the PGA Tour players together was really just – of bringing the band back together moment for this. It's kind of like uh, what Greg Norman called the Super Bowl kind of equivalent for golf right now and the ratings through the roof. You talk about like how 
the live players aren't getting the coverage in the futures groups. They didn't get any showings on there and coverage at all. The Masters is one of the few tournaments that has full free coverage on Masters.com, at least in the U.S. And it was really just a great moment because a lot of the players have even said it's a media a nar narrative that there's bad blood between these guys. But there really isn't. They've enjoyed playing with each other. The only difference was some people just had the, the live players had the logos for their live tournament teams and not kind of like your typical golf sponsors that you see on every other player. But that's really all it was. And as for the weather, seeing the tree fall down on Friday, it's a miracle that nobody got hurt. And it actually is really funny because at the Masters, you're not even allowed to have your phones on the course. So it took a really long time for that footage to get released to the public. But all of the weather in general just really proved to be another test for these players that only the toughest could endure. And John Rahm is the one that stayed steady throughout the entire storm and was able to pull away when it mattered most. And that's why he won by such a strong lead. What was your favorite moment from the Masters? Be sure to comment down below. For Amanda Volk and Ashley Mascaro, I'm Rob Cardini. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind-the-scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.